this is, and we welcome back Daniel Knapp, Chief Economist of IB Europe. Daniel um, will lead the next panel of experts in a discussion to explore data management, um, best practices, and um, uh, to, for SSPs to increase transparency and trust and solve unnecessary trading and information sharing complexities within the ecosystem. So over to you, Daniel. Uh, thank you very much, David. And um, um, if you look at the title of this panel, Data Best Practices, that sounds daunting, that sounds technical, but actually it's not quite. So let me give, give you a bit of context on this panel because you might, have, you might not have heard this title in a, in a programmatic panel before. Um, we have in the industry and in this conference already spoken a lot about things like supply chain transparency, SPO, and um, in particular in the first panel of how programmatic is more than just buying and selling and how the infrastructure can and should be used for different things. We've also heard about attribution and other, and other things. And we have to bear in mind that this year, in 2020, is a very special year where we've seen the ad revenues of many publishers drop we're seeing an increased concentration on the one hand, but also fragmentation on the other hand, which makes the um, yep, financing of publishers of premium content increasingly challenging. And we are in digital advertising, not in any old industry. Uh, advertising is a key pillar in supporting the third estate. We are supporting premium publishers. We are supporting that um, public opinion can be shaped in a transparent and non-partisan way. So advertising is incredibly important for that. And we want to figure out whether there's, well, there's been a lot of attention on the buy side, on custom bidders, on SPO, how publishers, more than just selling their inventory through programmatic, can really reap the benefits of data and how um, working with their SSPs, they can kind of maximize the control of programmatic and shape their future. And with that, I want to welcome my um, wonderful set of panelists. I hope you are all on. I cannot see you right now. Um, so we got um, Mark Bausinger from Double Verify, Isabella Widaska from Yieldbird, Shane Shevlin, IP on Web, and um, Jacqueline um, Boyaki from Pubmatic as well. Thank you very much, everyone, for, um, for joining me. And um, just to get started, um, let's just do a lay of the land here. Um, we've seen initially programmatic uh, consists of about 70% of all kind of digital display broadly ad revenues, but it remains very, very complex in Europe. From a publisher perspective, um, why is that? Why is it so complex? Why do these transparency issues um, uh, persist? Um, if you could briefly introduce yourselves and um, frame this question for us all. Um, thank you very much. Uh, maybe we start with, uh, with you, Shane. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Shane from iPhone Web. Uh, <clears throat> so a great opening question, Daniel. And I think, you know, th there's there's probably a, a trade off that that needs to be made when, when we talk about sort of programmatic trading as opposed to trading inside, for example, wall gardens. Um, you know, it's it, avoid the complexity of open standards, um, uh, you know, or get better transparency i think and and broadly the complexity that i'm talking about stems from the fact that you know the open web um you know programmatic trading on the open web it it it, it is complex because of how how uh, pragma uh, programmatic has evolved and it, it's 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 complex because of the fragmented nature of of the supply that you're trying to reach that the, the desired audience that, that advertisers want to reach on the open web and i think the distinction here is that you know wall wall gardens will often sort of showcase their their simplicity in reaching you know these desired audiences whereas you know transparency their definition of transparency is very much you know or frequently self-defined as it were um and so you know broadly i think um, you know, if if uh, if if you want to trade on 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 open standards, it's going to be complex. Um, open standards, on the other hand, afford you um, the tools with which you can you can guarantee the, the transparency that you know our industry so badly needs. Thanks, Shane. Um, Mark, Isabella, Jacqueline, what do you think about this? Why is it so complex for publishers today? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Isabella Vidaska and I'm a senior analyst uh, in Europe uh, from publisher's side. Um, 
from my point of view, I think looking at the beginning of programmatic advertising, uh, we can see that there, there, is, there could be impression there is lack of transparency. But uh, I think that nowadays there is uh, so market is changing so much that uh, we see that transparency is getting better and better. For example, by uh, adding add, add the TXT uh, to publishers' websites, so we have more uh, we can prevent fraud from demand vendors. For uh, moreover. We also uh, first price last year's first price in Google. Uh, I also a uh, big step in um, transparency in pricing for publishers. Uh, also, um, think like um, end of thirty party cookies. I think it also can be seen as a, a big step to better transparency uh, for publishers for users because uh, users will know where the data uh, are uh, going to. Um, but from complexity point of view uh, and uh, publisher point of view, I think programmatic uh, is complex uh, because uh, when we, for example, looking from a small publisher we, uh, who um, work with um, only open market on Google AdSense, for them, programmatic is seen a simple one, but working with big, bigger publishers, big media group, we see that uh, complexity is visible for our publishers because they have very different uh, sections which have to be taken, uh, taken care of. For example, not only open market, but also direct sales, uh, diff different demand partners. Uh, you have to get, have good, very big knowledge about uh, programmatic, uh, how to set things to work uh, flawlessly, to work together to bring more revenue for publishers. And so I think uh, uh, this complexity is visible, but I think market, uh, our market, uh, advertising market is uh, evolving uh, so much. So we have uh, companies, for example, like ours, uh, like Lilbert, where we trying to help our publishers to understand uh, programmatic. So we have, we uh, can educate them and uh, make it uh, more easier for them. And Jacqueline, from a pragmatic point of view, do you see similar challenges across all your publishers? Is it across the board or, or do, do you see a strong variations by market or type of publisher? Um, yeah, I think, I think, you know, I think what's made it hard for publishers is that I think as an industry we've been pretty siloed. Um, and I think we've had to evolve, you know, there's been, there's always different levels of challenges that I think publishers are hit with, you know, uh, year on year, you know, we had GDPR, um, you know, we've, in, you've, we've now enforced um, ads.txt, there's now apps.txt as well, uh, supply chain object, you know, uh, sellers.json, and all of these good initiatives, I think that, you know, IAB has really helped us kind of bring in um, that kind of cohesion, I think, um, and I think that was what was missing. Um, and I think by having those kind of standardizations that has helped us work together a lot more and actually helped to solve uh, the challenges that a lot of the publishers uh, have have today when working in programmatic because everybody would be siloed and working in a different way. Um, so I think I do think the transparency piece, whilst it's a challenge, I do think it's getting better. Um, I do think we're evolving to making sure that we can try and work together to, to solve for a better open uh, internet. Um, so yeah, I think I think those are the areas, and I think and I think those standards I think have to continue. I think it's always hard to work out who should be the who should lead this, and I think it's been good to see the IAB step in and, and say, look, these are the kind of standards that we need to to kind of adhere to. And I think all of those kind of things has, has made it a bit more seamless. Um, so whilst there has been challenges in programmatic, I do think it's got better. Uh, Mark, and I'm in particular. I'm interested to hear from you because you are not an not an SSP, but you can stand kind of on top of that. Now with header bidding, we're in a situation where publishers need to manage not one or two, but maybe half a dozen or even more SSPs at the same time. Um, so, what are the challenges here in kind of integrating this and kind of weaving all this together? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's such a great point around um, the increase in partner diversification that we've seen over the last couple of years for publishers, and I I think that's actually really uh, an effect of kind of the nature of programmatic, right? Programmatic at its core is a marketplace, similar almost akin to like a stock exchange. Right? It's there to support them, to give them those insights that they need as well. And I think it is working collaboratively um, to kind of build 
um, the knowledge and, and a story about what's happening with, with the inventory. Thanks. And Isabella, you know, I'm pretty intrigued by your job title as a senior adops analyst. You do these things in practice. You now you look, you, you really look into kind of the, the world of programmatic. What kind of insights do you find that are relevant for publishers? Um, I think that um, when we talk when we talk about data, uh, that publishers mostly uh, when we when we with, uh, we work with, and they mostly um, focus on data like impression revenue or TMP. Uh, and um, from from my point of view, uh, when they more um, developed, um, they can try to use more. Um, data like win rate, bid rate uh, to help them um, increase their um, knowledge about uh, uh, how the uh, programmatic uh, environment looks like for the inventory. Uh, with this data, they can choose uh, uh, how the programmatic strategy will, will look like, um, for example, uh, looking at win rate, our publishers uh, very usually um, want to um, Mm, looking about, looking at uh, low win rate, they try to uh, remove SSPs which are not effective for them. So um, it uh, usually depends on the um, on the on the publishers. When we have very uh, very basic um, publishers, he, he, they don't need some complex data from SSPs from importing. But when we have more advanced um, publishers, they need a lot uh, more 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 uh, more sophisticated uh, reporting. Mm -hmm. And. Um... You mentioned some of those strategies, Jackie and Isabella, that publishers can use. Now, as I mentioned in my introduction, on the buy side, we've seen SPO being all the rage. So optimization, taking control of the supply chain, trying to either shorten it, to optimize it, to use it more strategically. And, and we've published, have seen publishers opening up to programmatic because over the past, because they became more skilled. There wasn't this fear anymore that the demand side powers acting like an avalanche and kind of um, suppressing their margins. Now, um, with SPO become, getting traction, what can publishers do? We've got the DPO, demand path or demand preference optimization. What can they do to optimize the demand, to pick what are good advertisers for me, what aren't good advertisers? How do I orchestrate my SSPs maybe in a more dynamic way? Um, Shane, um, what, what are you seeing from an iPhone web perspective here? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think DPO is is one of those things that it's it's become a a, a necessary uh, evil, as it were. Um, but I think it, it it you can undertake it on two levels, both tactical and strategic. So, you know, tactically, you just need to understand who are, who are the good buyers, sort of what are the payment terms that uh, you're being extended by by the different buyers, and that may depend on the platform that that that's being used. So. You know, you can also look at things like win rates, clearing prices, and so on to, to understand, um, you know, uh, who's actually keenly interested in, in buying your inventory, uh, and then try to understand also what's the ad quality like associated with those buyers. On a more strategic level, then, you know, I, I think recent um, initiatives um, or additions, I guess, to the, the open RTB standards, like, for example, the content object, you know, one of the previous panels spoke about the rise of, uh, of CTV, CTV and, and uh, probably most growth coming from, from that area in, in, in the next few quarters. I think the content object, um, you know, is, is uh, a hugely important mechanism for, um, for, uh, for for CTV CTV uh, publishers to try and understand, you know, what's the what's the nature of interest in, in my inventory. So I think it has something like up to to 40, uh, 40 different uh, parameters that can be populated by the SSP on the way uh, to uh, various demand partners. So things around you know the 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 name of the show, for example, um, the ratings that the show has. Um, a whole range of useful information that a buyer can look at to determine uh, whether you know a desired audience actually exists within within that inventory pool, and so really you know working. I think SSPs have have a responsibility in that context to really work with their publishers to understand. Firstly, can you pass this information, um, and publishers should be asking the question: Can you support uh, me passing this information to to DSPs? 
Um, and then if you can mine that uh, in, in, in a way that, that's clever, you know, there's a whole host of, of useful uh, insight and, and um, intelligence that can be, can be gleaned from it. Mm -hmm. And, and Mark, in our, in our prep call, you mentioned the term demand path mapping. I'm pretty curious what's behind that. Can you enlighten us? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the big challenges around demand path optimization um, is just simply understanding who is actually delivering, and this is the key word in my mind, incremental value, right? As, as Shane kind of touched on there, it's, it's not just, okay, let's, you know, plug in a bunch of partners and we'll hope that they, they kind of shake out to the best overall revenue. Um, but really trying to understand where is that demand coming from and constructing that mapping, I think is um, really one of the key first steps in a demand path optimization strategy, right? Is saying, okay, what SSPs do we have laid out? Those SSPs plug into what DSPs, those DSPs access what agencies and brands. Um, constructing that mapping gives you that kind of insight into where um, your value is actually coming from. And then layering on, uh, I think, a more holistic view of the partner. And as Shane outlined, um, you know, some of the questions around your payment terms, questions around the latency that they may introduce if you have them in a client-side header bidding integration versus if you have them server to server, if you have them just existing as a buyer through some other partner. Um, creating that mapping, I think, is a great way to kind of lay out what currently exists as the structure. And going back to your, your kind of first point, um, there's been an explosion in partner diversification, right? It used to be everyone kind of works with two, three partners. All of a sudden you're working with, you know, 10 to 12. I think naturally there's there's kind of a, um, a thinning that is happening for most publishers right now is to kind of optimize and say, well, maybe we don't need all these partners. Um, that's a huge process and undertaking who's delivering that value in which way and um, creating that structure uh, is a great first step. Uh, also, I, I would be remiss here um, and I, I promised the IB Europe that I would mention, uh, we did actually put together a little bit of a guide for DPO. Uh, it was released back in September. Um, it answers some of these questions, some of the, um, I think, initial kind of first steps and lays out some of the concepts around how to construct this mapping and how to kind of, you know, fulfill some of the promises of DPO. Hmm. I'll take, take a, a, a brief step back and I'll try to synthesize some of your answers all, um, from all of you here. Um, I think a key takeaway that we can already see is, um, we've got new terms and new complexities, but it shouldn't be daunting for publishers. So uh, some things are kind of one-off exercises, you know, payment terms, for instance, or a demand path mapping. You know, that's something that can probably be done in a, in a static manner. Other things are more kind of in the adults world, um, which need to be always on. Um, block lists were, block lists were mentioned and other analytic tools. Um, so there's a whole portfolio available. Um, I think, um, in the remaining minutes, I wouldn't go to the heart of the issue, um, which is again, um, many, many different SSPs or general partners on the publisher side, often understaffed teams of publishers and different taxonomies of data. If you look at the reporting interfaces or even SSP APIs, what's an advertiser, what's a brand, kind of what's in the buyer field, how much information does the interface give you, different visuals, different kind of time periods. Um, there's a high degree of fragmentation. Yes, we have in other areas of the industry, standardization, we got like pre-bid, great. We got STXT, great. Supply chain object, great. But when it comes to the actual reporting and making sense of things, I think there's a re real risk of balkanization here. So um, a question to all of you before we already have to wrap up, um, how can the intermediaries kind of work together in such a sense that they can empower their publishers to see the data kind of holistically, you know, like a true north, We've seen it on the buy side with Datorama, Beckon, and other integration platforms that synthesize things. What can publishers do to bring all this together? And how can you guys actually, or how are you collaborating to make it easier for publishers to compare apples and apples? Who wants to start? No? Okay. Um, yeah, I think um, I think one of the, the, the sessions before touched on, you know, the PwC is the study. Uh, there's already a task force at hand, uh, kind of looking into that, where did that 15% go? But I think a big part of what that task force is trying to do is bring us all together now and actually standardise the language around, you know, these parameters that we talk about, because, you know, one SSP will, will do it differently to another SSP. And I think this is where all of the confusion lies, especially for uh, publishers when they have to invest in uh, analysts to kind of look at this data. Um, and to ensure that, you know, there's not misinterpretation of the data too. So I think the, 
I think there needs to be a lot more of that. There needs to be a standard. There needs to be a standard language. Um, it's not going to be simple. I think that's where the industry will try and get to. But having that standardized language, I think, in terms of, you know, what does the data mean, I think will really help the industry as a whole. Uh, yeah, I can agree with Jacqueline. Uh, look, uh, working with uh, different SSP, uh, I see that there is problems, like even for us uh, analysts, uh, when we see a very different metrics for the same, uh, very different uh, same metric, but different uh, naming for uh, for uh, in in uh, dashboard in SSPs. So it can be quite difficult to understand uh, what we are looking for, what we are want to know, what we want, what what numbers we are, uh, want to see. So I think it's uh, standardized. Uh, uh, this metrics is a clue for, for, for publishers and for us as companies. Mm -hmm. Great. And I'm getting a timeout signs here. So very quickly, uh, uh, Mark and Shane, if you got a 20 second uh, recommendation. Uh, sure, I'll go. Um, so I, I think uh, it's, it's a really good question and it sounds like a sensible question, uh, Daniel, but I, I'm not sure there's a satisfactory answer. answer. I think because of what's happening with the deprecation of persistent IDs, the single source of truth kind of era is, is for now at least a bygone era. I think maybe we'll get to a point where, you know, we, we have common standards around analytics specifically over time. But for right now, I think for the sort of the next the year or two, at least publishers, you know, the, their version of truth is really, you know, it relates to the tool set that they use. Um, and, th and that may depend on whether you're, you know, heavily reliant on, on exposing audiences via persistent IDs. So your version of truth may be uh, identity resolution provider X via prebid because mm. you know, your agency of choice uses the same vendor in in their DSP of choice. Uh, for another publisher, it could be contextual signal, um, and and therefore you know your contextual vendor is, is important. But I think it's going to just simply take time, unfortunately, to get back to common standards. And just to kind of wrap up here, um, uh, having built actually a tech, uh, taxonomy and labeling uh, normalization technology, um, we know firsthand how difficult that is, how complicated it is. My advice would be to leverage partners. Um, you know, again, going back to kind of the concept that we are the marketplace, we are the owners of uh, programmatic. Uh, we all have that innate ability. So I, my advice would be to speak with every possible, um, you know, SSP that you're thinking about working with, DSPs, get the normalizations from them, look at different technologies that are available out there that do this already, um, and, and really be, you know, not just consultative, I think, but um, input your own uh, knowledge into that space as well. Uh, that is uh, the strongest thing that I think publishers can do uh, is to represent themselves. Thank you all for your insights, for sharing this. Um, fascinating discussion. I could have continued for a long time. Um, I'm going to pass back to the studio. Thank you all for joining. Back to David. Thank you, Dan. And all panelists, it was clearly a topic of interest in the industry. So sharing uh, your experience here um, would have been greatly appreciated by many. Before we move on to the final panel of the day, we just want to get your feedback to see whether you agree that SSPs should standardized taxonomies and data to help publishers in the open internet so please let us know by taking part in our final poll and hopefully the results will be in um, I, i'd like to say you know the programmatic trading committee will be continuing uh, their effort um, and this conversation in our work plan and um, as mark passenger said as well uh, with regards to uh, not just spo but dpo advice um, please go to the ib europe's website the results should be in in a second and while we wait for them maybe we'll uh ah there you go yes very much answer if ssp should standardize taxonomies 